Hello everyone, this is Krishna Vasudevan, a technical marketing engineer at Infoblox. This video will talk about load balancing with the help of Infoblox DNS Traffic Control. DNS Traffic Control DTC uses DNS to direct users to an appropriate instance of an application. It load balances users' application traffic based on the client's location, server's location and the server's availability. Through DNS traffic control, IT administrators can now set up multiple sites and direct clients to the best available servers. DTC monitors application availability using various types of health checks to make sure the clients are sent to servers that are available. You need a functional Infoblox grid with a grid master. Several features were introduced in NIOS 8.3 including DTC health check support for multi-tier architecture, CSV import export support, dynamic load balancing based on SNMP and RTD and support for SRV records. You also need an active grid with a DNS license, the DNS traffic control license and at least one NIOS appliance acting as an authoritative DNS server. The most common use cases include load balancing internal and external applications that are hosted on the internet and disaster recovery. In this use case, we use the inbuilt MaxMind database support which contains information about which IP address blocks belong to which geographical area of the world. The built-in MaxMind database support is used to identify a query source IP address at the continent, country, city and subdivision levels. If the DNS query originates from within America, it is directed to the America pool. Within the Americas pool, the response is handed out on a round-robin basis or any other criteria that has been defined. Similarly, for all queries originating from Europe, the destination pool is going to the Europe pool, within which the response is handed out on a round-robin basis. In this use case, traffic can be load balanced using DTC based on the querying client subnet or extensible attributes of the client subnet. A simple example of this use case is two subnet rules. If the DNS query originates from subnet 1, it is directed to pool 1. Then pool 1 directs DNS queries to appropriate DTC servers based on the load balancing method configured. Similarly, if the DNS query originates from subnet 2, it is directed to pool 2. The pool 2 then directs the DNS queries to appropriate servers based on the load balancing method configured. In the disaster recovery use case, it is based on the availability to provide continuity of service for applications. The load balance method configured in this case is global availability. The idea is to have all traffic go to the primary data center as long as it is available. If the primary data center ever goes down, then all the traffic will be directed to the backup data center. When the primary data center comes back online, all traffic will again be directed to the primary data center. Let us now look at a demo to look at DTC in action. The grid used in this demo has one member and has the DTC license set. We are going to look at load balancing dev.abc.net. The grid is authoritative for the zone abc.net. Let us now look at how DTC is configured. The load balance domain name consists of two pools. The queries will be load balanced based on which subnet they belong to. Pool site A has one server and site B has two servers. Between these two servers, round robin is used to resolve a query. Let us now Run a quick test. When the query originates from the subnet 172.26.1.0/24 subnet, you get a response from the server in pool B. When you run this query again, you get the response from the same pool. This occurs in a round-robin fashion between the two servers within pool B. 
Similarly, when the query originates from the subnet 192.168.0.0/24, you get the response from the server in pool A. DTC uses DNS to intelligently route traffic to the appropriate data center. It directs web requests across active or standby sites based on server's health. It optimizes performance and ensures 100% availability of internet-facing services. It improves response time by directing web requests based on geolocation. It integrates a cost-effective GSLB within an authoritative DNS server to simplify web infrastructure and reduce the cost of deploying, configuring and managing multiple devices. In short, it enables a simplified management. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for more such videos.